the Minnesota Vikings season depends on two things. It has two factors, and that is Kirk Cousins and this Minnesota Vikings defense. The Vikings started out the season 1-5, and five, went into their bye week 1-5, and five, and since then, there has been a huge different, a, a massive difference maker, and that is the Minnesota Vikings defense. Now, Kirk Cousins, these past two weeks have really improved. Now, I've been saying Kirk Cousins has had an awful season so far, although his last two games have been very impressive, and I hope to see this going forward. And this has really been a difference maker for this Minnesota Vikings team. Since uh, one, uh, going into our bye week one and five, Kirk Cousins has averaged a 127.2 QBR, 72 completion percentage, 258 yards per game, uh, 12 to 1 touchdown uh, interception ratio. Now, that one interception shouldn't even have been an interception. That was Adam Thielen's fault. So realistically, he has had 12 touchdowns, zero interceptions. That one interception was not his fault. Anyways, Kirk Cousins now is coming off of week 12 NFC Offensive Player of the Week. And really, this was well-deserved, and he should be playing like this going forward. Now, this next few weeks really depends on Kirk Cousins. Of course, we have the Jacksonville Jaguars. And Dalvin Cook is our best offensive weapon. So, of course, we need Dalvin Cook to stay healthy for this Vikings season to go... Uh, to really live up to how they should have been in the start of the season, and that's getting a winning record. Now, really, it just depends on Dalvin Cook being healthy, but really, these two games, uh, the three-game stretch against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and then we have the Bears, and we have the Saints. Those three-game stretch, you cannot feed Dalvin Cook. Because those are three of the best run-stopping defenses in the NFL, and two out of th uh, three of those teams have great offenses. The Bears' offense sucks. But the two other teams' offenses are great. And realistically, it just depends on this uh, Vikings defense and Kirk Cousins. Because we cannot lose both of those games, end the season 8-8, eight and eight, and make the playoffs. Because at that point, the only way the Vikings can make the playoffs at 8-8 eight and eight is if the Arizona Cardinals completely fall flat. Which honestly is possible. I mean, they had an awful performance against the New Orleans, I mean, against the... Uh, the New England Patriots last week, and they had an awful performance and lost that game. But we would need them to also lose against the Eagles. We would need them to lose against the Giants. And this is just not looking like a very likely scenario at all. So I do not think the Vikings can make the playoffs unless Kirk and our defense really shows up against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the New Orleans Saints. This week, we have a pretty, we have a refresher week against the Jacksonville Jaguars, who are a bottom three team in the NFL right now. We have a refresher week. And then after that, this defense needs to really step up, which they have. I mean, going into the bye week, the Vikings defense has allowed 32 points a game going into the bye week. Since then, they've only allowed 22 points a game. Now, you can look at the matchups, and yes, the Vikings had harder uh, games in the first six weeks of the season so far, but we still played Packers offense, great offense after bye week. We played Cowboys offense, again, a very underrated offense, and also the Panthers offense. Panthers have a good offense. Now, without Christian McCaffrey, it's not a great offense, but you they still have a pretty good offense. Outside of that, there is a few players, only like three players, who have really improved and stepped up for this Vikings defense. After getting rid of Yannick Ngakwe, Vikings have really struggled to get to the passer. But that's the blitzing really helped, and that's why Eric Kendricks, Eric Wilson, and Harrison Smith all stepping up for this Vikings defense, this young Vikings secondary, has really improved. And that's why right now the Minnesota Vikings are one of the best defenses on third down, one of the best defenses in the red zone. And this is all because of these three guys who have really improved. And honestly, without them, I do not think the Vikings would even be impossible playoff contention right now I would they wouldn't be in the hunt if it wasn't for these few guys but we need that performance that we saw against the Carolina Panthers against the Carolina Panthers the only reason why the Panthers only lost by one point was because the Vikings offense made too many mistakes we had three turnovers that were awful fumbles and it all led to uh it all led to uh, points two of them touchdowns fumble return touchdowns and then one led to a field goal so the, the only reason why the Vikings uh, why the Carolina Panthers were close was because the Vikings had too many mistakes on offense and too many mistakes on special teams. And that's why it was only a one point game. But the Carolina Panthers only allowed 13 points that game or the Minnesota Vikings defense only allowed 13 points that game against the Carolina Panthers offense. And that's very impressive. We need that per performance that we saw from Kirk Cousins against the Carolina Panthers. We need the performance we saw from that defense against the Buccaneers and against the Saints. Because when the Vikings win this week against the Jacksonville Jaguars, we go against our hardest matchup, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, who are the best defense against the run. Not only that, but they really they get to the passer without blitzing. They get to the passer with ease. And Kirk Cousins is not going to be very safe under center. Kirk Cousins, his mobility has really improved. We see Kirk moving around like we've never seen him before. And he can move. He just doesn't.
And I've been saying this, Kirk can move around. He does not run with the ball. They don't design plays for him to run. He doesn't run on open opportunities as of every game that we've seen from him as of uh, like last week. Last week, he had a great mobility performance and he moved around a lot. He ran for two first downs, dove for two first downs, I should say instead, because that was impressive. Anyways, Kirk Cousins, we need that Kirk, not the Kirk who fumbled the ball last week but the Kirk who played every other snap except for when he fumbled the ball. We need that Kirk Cousins, and we need that Vikings defense, the defense that held the Carolina Panthers to 13 points, one touchdown and two field goals, which were set up basically by the offense. We need that defense, and we need that Kirk Cousins against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers because we can't feed Dalvin Cook against them. We cannot. They are the best run-stopping defense in the NFL, and outside of that, their defense is pretty impressive, but we have so many playmakers. There is so many players you can design plays for. We saw last week, we saw BC Johnson and Chad Beebe, two of our X factors that we don't use very often. We can use against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers because they won't expect it. We need Irv Smith to rest this week. I don't think they should play Irv Smith this week. We need him to rest and we need him healthy because we need everybody we can have against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers because when the Vikings win this week against the Jacksonville Jaguars, they are playing Tom Brady off of a bye week after two losses. And if the Vikings come come up with a win and it's going to depend on Kirk Cousins and it's going to depend on our defense. If the Vikings somehow come up with a win against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, our playoff chances go from 23% to 95. 23% to 95 per NFL network. That is wild. Because of course this is our hardest matchup. And I've been saying it a lot. I don't see a very possible scenario where the Vikings can beat the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Because One thing I've learned from watching football throughout my lifetime, you do not want to play Tom Brady after a a bye week off of a loss. You do not want to play Tom Brady because that is when he is the most focused. However, he has been not very good as of late, uh, last few games. Uh, In his last four matchups, he's thrown, uh, no, last three matchups, he's thrown six interceptions in his last three matchups. And honestly, that news right there is bad news for the Vikings. Because Tom Brady is going to look bad, and he's going to come up and look great the next game. And this is what we know already. We know that Tom Brady's going to have so much fun throwing over our young corners. These young corners going against all of those playmakers he has to work with on offense is going to be horrendous. It's going to be awful for us. Not only that, but they have three good running backs. Three. They can run all over us also. Three good running backs, two great tight ends, two amazing wide receivers. In fact, almost three wide receivers if you're counting Anthony Miller in that picture as well. Oh, and they have Antonio Brown now. They have so many playmakers on offense where I don't know how the Vikings defense can handle them. But if they somehow, if the Vikings defense somehow comes up and holds them to under 30 points and the Vikings do win that game with a good Kirk Cousins. And when I say a good Kirk Cousins, I am talking about a Kirk Cousins who knows how to move around because he's not going to be very uh, comfortable inside the pocket. They're going to hold Dalvin Cook to under four yards of carry because, of course, that's how you beat the Vikings offense. You hold Dalvin Cook to under four yards of carry, and then you pressure Kirk all the time because when Kirk is uncomfortable, he will make mistakes. And when he makes mistakes, that leads to our losses. And this is how the Viking season has been so far. And this is what we will see against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And we need the best Kirk. We need the Kirk we saw against the Carolina Panthers. We need that Kirk Cousins, the Kirk Cousins that can move around, the Kirk Cousins that can hit his players on full stride. We need him to play great. And here's the thing. The Vikings are going to win this week. And the reason why I know the Vikings are going to win against the Jacksonville Jaguars is because Dalvin Cook. Now, if Dalvin Cook gets injured, it's going to be a different story. But still, because of Dalvin Cook, I do think the Vikings have like a 90% chance of beating the Jacksonville Jaguars because he might get, he might get injured. But you know he's going to play great. You know Dalvin Cook is going to play great. You have no idea what the Kirk Cousins you are going to get in any game. When Kirk Cousins comes out to the match, when Kirk Cousins... Uh, starts his opening drive his first reception if he throws a great ball his first pass you know you're getting the good Kirk if he throws an interception right away you are getting the bad Kirk and this is what we have seen from the season so far against the Atlanta Falcons Kirk Cousins on the first pass of the game threw an interception and I knew from that moment this is the this is going to be a bad day this is going to be a bad Kirk Cousins that day but still they, they ended up getting close, but that's only because of Kirk and garbage time. And that's the reason why Kirk has the best stats in fourth quarter is because a lot of it is just from garbage time. Anyways, 
this is really going to pen on this defense also because this defense has improved a lot and Kirk Cousins has honestly just lived up to what he's supposed to be. People are praising Kirk Cousins like crazy right now because he's com coming off of a few good games. I'm going to be totally honest. This is the Kirk Cousins we expect. I'm like, <laughs> I, I'm not very impressed. I'm just going to be honest. I mean, this is the, this is his, this is what he's getting paid to do. He's getting paid to be a quarterback that can lead us to a Super Bowl. Remember, that's why they gave him the contract was so he could lead us to a Super Bowl. That's why his contract is so high. So him playing like this shouldn't be much of a surprise. I mean, this shouldn't be like you shouldn't be praising him this much because this is kind of what he's expected to do. Anyways, of course, when you pay Kirk Cousins this much, you lost all of you, all of your defensive players. Our defense is completely young now. So our chances at a Super Bowl has went down a lot since we've paid Kirk Cousins. I really was. I've, I've been on the Kirk Cousins train for years now, and I, this year I'm just I, I'm just like, we need a new quarterback. I know he's playing great this last couple games, but still we need a new quarterback because we can't continue to pay this quarterback this much money when he just needs more people around him. And when I say more people around him, I'm saying he needs to work with a better defense. And we can't pay any defensive players right now. All of our players are injured and the rest of them are gone. Entire defense is gone because of that Kirk Cousins contract. So our season relies on this defense and our season relies on Kirk Cousins. And when I say that, I'm talking about three matchups that are very scary for us. And this is going to be the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, of course, our biggest one. And then we have the New Orleans Saints and we also have the Chicago Bears. All three of these matchups are great run stopping defenses and great at getting to the passer. These are three of the best defenses in the NFL. And one thing I know about Kirk Cousins, he does not play great against good defenses. He played great against the Chicago Bears, but the thing is, you have to you have to also put in the Chicago Bears don't have the same offense that the New Orleans Saints and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers have. I mean, Kirk Cousins can play great against the Chicago Bears. He can play great against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Thing is, it relies on the defense also because Tom Brady can and and that offense, how many playmakers they have, can definitely match the amount of points that Kirk can put on the board and honestly just put more. And this is what we know. And the Vikings can only afford one more loss this season. Yes, Vikings can go 10 and 6. I know it's very unlikely because of all these matchups. Vikings can go 10 and 6, and that's winning all of our next matchups. Thing is, they won't. Because we know if we get the best Kirk Cousins we can have, if we get the best defense that we can have, we can go 10 and 6. But we know this is not going to happen because we know what we've seen from Kirk Cousins so far. He's not going to play great every game. He's not. But this month, December, we're going to have Kirk Tober in December. I don't think he's going to play great every month, every week. He's definitely not going to because I, I don't want to get my hopes up. But Vikings need to go at least 9-7. and seven. If we go 8-8, eight and eight, we can still make the playoffs at 8-8. Eight and, eight, eight and eight. But at that point, it just relies on the, uh, the Arizona Cardinals falling apart for the Vikings to make the playoffs at that point. And I just wouldn't want that to happen because it would come down to strength of schedule and some other tiebreakers that they like to go with. Anyways, 9-7, and seven, this is what we are striving for right now. We need to win this week and against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. If we win that week, 95% chance at the playoffs. And that's how that's our pass to the playoff right, right there. If we lose to the Buccaneers and win all the rest of our games, we can still make the playoffs, but it would, again, it would rely on the Arizona Cardinals falling flat. So this team, this Viking season, depends on Kirk Cousins. We need the Kirk Cousins we saw in the last two weeks. We need that guy against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. We need that guy against the New Orleans Saints and again against the Chicago Bears. Because we can't feed Dalvin Cook a bunch of carries and win the game. We can't against the Jaguars. We can't against the Lions. We can't against these next three games. Against these other three games, I mean to say. Anyways, this is why the Vikings season is... It's, it's rough because those are games. It's going to really test our offense. Our offense has not been tested like that all season. Our offense was tested in the uh, against the Indianapolis Colts, yes, but that was week two. Our offense was tested week two, and that didn't look good at all. It did not. We have not played a defense like we've seen so far. It tested our offense against the Chicago Bears. It did. They, sh they held Dalvin Cook to under four yards of carry, and our offense looked great. Thing is, Chicago Bears have such a bad offense to where how are they going to even be able to match the amount of points you put on the board? How? I mean, that offense is just so bad. Chicago Bears started out the season 5-1. and one. Now, they're, now they're under us in the division. Now they're third in the division. Vikings started out the season 1-5, and five, and now they're above them in the division. That's how important offense is. And with the Vikings offense, we can make the playoffs. Kirk can bring us to the playoffs. Thing is, we need him to show up every match, and we know that's not going to happen. Even if we make the playoffs, 
we know he can't bring us to the Super Bowl. Even if it, even though if that's part of his contract. Even if they why that's why the Vikings signed him in the first place. He can't because he's too inconsistent. I hope I'm wrong. I really hope I'm wrong. I've never hoped I was wrong this much in my life, but I've just I've seen enough. I want him to play great. I want him to bring us to a Super Bowl. I just don't think it's going to happen. I can't see I can't see a scenario where it would. Let me know what y'all think.